friends. It's Green Goddess Batana here to do another quick update. It's been a few months since I've last uploaded a video and that's because there's been a lot of changes happening. As you can see, I'm in a new space, which means I moved. <laughs> I'm really excited to be in my new house um, and I have lots of new plants to share with you. I'm really excited about that. Um, my Instagram following has been growing, so make sure you go over and check out my Instagram where you can send me messages, ask me questions, get involved. I love that part of the community, so make sure you go check that out. So I think over the last few months, the most requested video has been an update on my variegated fiddle leaf fig. And I think it's amazing that everybody wants to know what's going on with it. I have done a few updates on my Instagram account, so you've been able to see the progress so far. It's been very slow growing and it's still alive, which is the best news ever. <laughs> Just a quick backstory. I bought my variegated fiddle leaf fig tree off of a seller on eBay and I can link the information down below because there's been a lot of people who are curious in how to acquire this plant. I purchased my variegated ficus lyrata back in March of 2020. Um, I made an unboxing video. That's actually the last video I made. So you can go back and, and see my <laughs> expressions and how excited I was that I had acquired this super rare ficus. I'm a really huge fan of the ficus varieties and it's taken me a long time to be able to figure out specific care requirements. Um, I would say probably the better part of three years it's been rehabbing ficuses, you know, buying them, accidentally overwatering them, kill, you know, killing them, which is horrible, horrible, you know, taking cuttings of fiddle leaf fig trees, successfully getting them to root. It's been a really interesting few years for sure, but now I'm at the point where I have a pretty, pretty good understanding of ficus trees, and I'm not going to say that I'm perfect. I'm definitely not. There's a lot of mistakes that I make along the way, so... The moral of the story and the good news is that this tree is still alive. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I purchased my variegated ficus lyrata back in March from a seller on eBay and I received it, I unboxed it, and then it proceeded to drop almost all of its leaves. Um, I had potted it up in extremely airy potting mix, the little bit of soil, lots of orchid bark, because my greatest fear was that I was going to overwater it and, and end up harming it in that way. So I wanted to at least give it a chance, so I gave it a super airy soil mixture. Um, the next thing that I did was put it directly under my grow light. Because I received it in March, I live in the Pacific Northwest and our winter and spring seasons are pretty gloomy a lot of the time. Um, we do get a little bit of snow in the winter and just like constant gray and rain through the spring. So I wanted to make sure that I could blast it with as much light as possible. So that was my goal in sticking it under the grow light. I also put it right next to my humidifier. I have a really awesome Lavoie humidifier that offers a warm spray setting. Not really a spray, um, a mist. It's a warm mist setting. So I would click on the warm mist setting because the ficus was coming from a really tropical place. So it needed that to be able to acclimate. It, like I said, proceeded to drop almost all of its leaves. I had one leaf remaining on this tree. Um, it was high anxiety, let me tell you. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart. Um, I was really discouraged because I felt like I was doing everything I could to help this plant thrive. I was giving it really great fertilizer. I was having it on a consistent watering schedule. I had the warm mist setting on my humidifier. I had given it really airy soil. I had stuck it under my grow light. So 
I was getting really discouraged and I would be sitting there on the couch watching a movie with my partner and I would look over at the plant like a hundred times through the movie, just obsessing over it, just sending it good vibes, hoping that it would survive, wishing and hoping that it would put out a new leaf. Well, we moved into this new space in May 2020 and I was really nervous about moving my plant collection. As you know, I have over 150 plants in my, in my home, in my plant collection, and that number has been steadily growing since then. I probably have closer to 200 at this point. Um, but regardless, I was really nervous at that point. So I was very lucky I took uh, my, my more my more expensive plants that I wanted to be careful with. I put them in in the car and got them over here and got them all situated under the grow light and nice and safe with the humidifier. In this new house, I don't have great lighting in most of my rooms. It's a north facing home with this big south facing window, which I have dominated with my highlight plants, like most of my ficus. I've got my pink princess over there. I've got uh, a small Adansonii. I've got my, you know, my ficus benjamina, which is a fairly new plant that I acquired. I've got my um, ficus audrey and then my um, ficus ruby over here too. So, you know, I've got a few things going on in this south facing window, which is pretty much crammed with as many plants as possible. When we first moved into this house, I put my my big uh, ficus lyrata, the Home Depot rescue that you guys might know about. Um, I put that in here. I literally put all of my huge plants and then I couldn't open the window. So I had to find other lighting for these plants. So luckily I have a nice, east facing window in the second room over there and then the thing that saved everything was on the west facing side of the house there's this mud room with stairs that go down to the basement and i have figured out a way to maximize that space there's like a little window sill and then i have a bunch of hanging plants in there so i realized that it's the brightest room in the house. It's just completely windows. It's the warmest room in the house. And so it basically just gets blasted with that evening sun and it gets really nice and warm. Now I don't have my humidifier in this room. And so I was a little hesitant to move some of my plants in there because I was afraid they wouldn't have the best humidity level in there. But I think that moving them in there was the best course of action because it gave me a new leaf. Yay! <laughs> so the last thing that I want to mention is that I bought the plant back in March. I moved into this new house in May. And then a few weeks after I moved in here, I received a phone call from the Portland USDA. I was really sketched out about it. I had never been contacted by a government official. Um, he introduced himself. He was very nice. He said that he would require the phytosanitary certificate for the for the variegated fiddle leaf fig, or he would have to confiscate the plant and destroy it, which is just so heartbreaking. And I shared that with him. Um, like I shared how like disturbing that is. But he explained to me the reason why the phytosanitary certificate is so important and why it's important, why it's so important to have that legal documentation showing proof that it's a safe plant to be in the country. So luckily, I mean, I, I, so I really didn't have a lot of experience with importing plants from across the world. So I didn't save my phytosanitary certificate. I was a little bit nervous, but at least I had my unboxing video. I was like, I have a video of me unboxing the plant, which shows that it was opened by Customs and Border Control. So would that suffice? So he was very nice. I sent him the video um, and then I reached out to the original seller on eBay and they were awesome. They sent me over a copy of the Fido certificate, but word to the wise, now that I've experienced this, 
please get this certificate and hold on to it for your records because it would just be so heartbreaking to receive a plant that has been on your wish list forever and then have to hand it over to the government to have them destroy it. So <laughs> I just, I'd be so upset if that happened. So luckily I was able to send him the video of me unboxing that, that plant and then I was able to acquire a copy of the certificate from the seller. So always maintain good communication with, your, with the seller um, and then try to keep the documentation if you can. So enough chatting. I'm going to show you the progress of my variegated fiddle leaf fig. I mean, it's not great progress, but it's still something I'm pretty proud of. And I'm so proud of that little plant for putting out a new leaf. So come on and I'll show you. So this is the plant room I was telling you about. I mean, it's not really a room. It has a stairway down to the basement there, but it is a west facing window that has tons of light that comes in. I'm trying to figure out how to maximize the space even more. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, put some more hooks up in the ceiling over on this side so that I can hang a bunch more from that side. Um, but what I've done is I've hung a bunch of plants over on this side and I'm gonna zoom back in a little bit so you can see I've got a Monstera adansonii, the narrow form hanging here. I've got my string of hearts here which has been just like blooming like crazy. It loves this west facing window. It's been doing so great. I have chopped and propagated this plant about four times in the time I've owned it. So all, like I had chopped it way up to about here. And so all of this is new growth in the last few months. This is my Philodendron Rio Sport, which is different than the Brazil. And we've talked about that in previous videos. You can see how long and narrow these leaves are and how the variegation is pretty similar to the Brazil, but its leaf shape makes the difference. That's pretty happy in here. It hasn't put out a ton of new growth since we moved in here, so I moved it over into this window in hopes that it would do so. Um, I have my Syngonia chia pence up here. I have my Hoya obovada splash in here. And I have an, um, an epiphytic cactus up here. This is actually an orchid cactus that some friends got me for my birthday last year. And it's been pretty happy. It put out a bunch of new growth have a mounted staghorn fern over here um, but over here I have on this little windowsill quite a few of my highlight required plants this one on the end over here is my ficus elastica burgundy um, it was small when I got it it's it's been really it's it was suffering for a long time I just don't think I had it in bright enough light so I moved it in here and it's doing really well. Um, I have a Christmas cactus cutting from my dad in this little like wood thing that came from um, one of our family members. He's passed away, so it's kind of special to me. Um, I have this, I have this uh, pothos that I'm trying to rehab. It's just like, I don't know what it is. I can handle the most difficult plants but when it comes to like a marble queen I don't know why I cannot get that plant it's like the easiest plant in the world but I struggle with it so much um, I have a variegated string of hearts that I moved in here recently um, and I did have it over in my plant area in the living room but it's got that north facing light like I was saying and I have the light supplemented with a grow light, but it's just, I wanted to see what would happen if I moved it in here. Um, I have my ficus triangularis, which has made an amazing recovery. Um, when I moved to this new house in May, all of the leaves dropped off and it was like the saddest thing I've ever seen. So it's been doing really well in this bright room. Um, I have my Hoya Australis Lisa here. Um, it's got this beautiful variegation on it. Um, the new growth isn't putting out such variegated leaves so I wanted to put it in a bright spot so it would inspire more variegation. I have my Monstera Peru 
which is finally putting out new growth. Seriously, this was the slowest plant to root ever. It took probably six months for this to even occur. I had three new leaves on it and it's awesome. And then for what you were waiting for, my variegated fiddle leaf fig tree here. You can see um, the stock here had many leaves attached to it. I think when I received it, I had maybe five, four or five leaves on it. As you can tell, this is the last remaining leaf from the old growth. And it's holding on, it's doing its best. It, I'm literally so proud of this little leaf. It provided enough energy for the plant to create this new growth. And I couldn't be more thrilled with it. It is just the most stunning, creamy leaf. It's got this beautiful sage green variegation little hint of some darker splashes in there. I can't wait for it to produce another leaf. I'm just keeping it in this spot. I do not move it. I rarely touch it. I've been considering repotting it because the soil mixture is extremely airy and it does require more frequent watering, but I'm okay with that to be honest. Um, so we put out this new little leaf here and that's the extent of it. That's the update for now. Yeah, so as you can tell, I'm really attached to this plant. I'm really attached to all my plants. Um, they're all a really big part of my life. They make me really happy. Um, and I'm really excited to share with you that the plant survived doing really well and I will let you know as soon as it's doing better. I'm hoping that it'll put out another new leaf hopefully by the end of the summer. I'm just going to keep it in this bright room. I'm going to keep watering it. I'm going to keep fertilizing it and then make sure you follow me on Instagram at Green Goddess Botanic to make sure you get those updates about these plants you're curious about. Thank you for everyone who's been requesting this video. I hope that this is encouraging you know it's definitely an advanced level ficus i would say so if you are a beginner if you are learning i would say collect some easier ficus first because i would hate for you to get to this plant and then accidentally hurt it or you know like waste your money on it so just take it easy start slow try to like propagate some cuttings of a fiddle leaf fig or go out and buy yourself a fiddle leaf fig. Try maybe the rubber tree varieties, etc. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.